the story of Candyman is so perennial, and that's part of the reason why it's exciting to tell it at any time period. Um, from the origin of the story itself within in the context of, of the first film, you know, in the 1890s uh, to now. What we're talking about, I think, is the cycles of violence and how history repeats itself and how we collectively grieve and collectively process trauma, which is through stories. So I think it's it's always a, a time to tell a story like Candyman, which is, you know, the, kind of the big tragedy of, of the tale in the first place. Candyman was just like a real sort of urban legend when I was growing up. It wasn't necessarily just attached to the movie. It felt very present. Um, you know, I went to school like, right next to the projects. I lived across the street from the projects. And so um, for us, Candyman was just hanging out over, you know, across the street from us. Um, and so I think the first time I saw it was in elementary school. Um, but this was after I'd already kind of lived with the idea of, of <laughs> there being some demon ghost man killing people in the projects. So, um, uh, I, I think my first time seeing the movie was like terrifying as it is for most people, but I'd already kind of had this lore in my head. So it was kind of like connecting the dots. I was like, oh, that's Candyman. I see, I get it. I basically looked to history and, and there are stories that I already knew, stories that I found as I was doing research um, that I wanted to take inspiration from. I didn't want to like take these people's lives and say these are they're part of the Candyman lore, but just to be inspired by things that had actually happened um, and that related to our um, to our story. Um, and really, it was because I wanted to show how prevalent, common um, these horrific events are, and and how they're just you know this is a straight line from Danny Robitaille to Anthony and all the people in between. So for me, it was really necessary to to take inspiration from real life, but also not um, co-opt a story and like put it in, into our narrative. Um, so I think that was also a, a, a balance uh, to strike. How do you maintain tension when you know as soon as you say a fifth Candyman, the people who said it are gonna die? Like how do you prolong that? How do you make that exciting to watch every time it happens? Um, also, how do you like make someone saying Candyman five times like interesting every time it happens in the movie? <laughs> um, so it was really fun to kind of figure out different ways to to um, to to do them, and also different different scenarios and different people would happen to, and different ways that they say Candyman five times, and um, and from like a from a practical like workflow point of view, like we did a lot of previs, um, in particular because mirrors were so um, important, obviously, to the movie, and so trying to figure out like how to shoot the reflection of a reflection where you know in space like Candyman would be and all that stuff was really complicated, so pre was was really, um, really, really helpful. Um, and then on the day, it was really about like putting all the parts together and then like the actors like having fun um, with their gruesome deaths.